test, test, test. All right. All right, we're good. All right, Revolution. Hey, welcome to our voice actor Q&A panel. These are the guys you, you hear on Sonic Boom and other uh, Sonic Media every day that you play or you listen or watch to. Um, so I'm going to pass the mic around. I'm going to have every, I'm going to have the voice actors introduce who they are and what characters they play. Howdy, everybody. I'm Bill Freiberger, and I'm the voice of Comedy Chimp, the host of the Comedy Chimp Show, and Lady Walrus. Hi. I'm Colleen O'Shaughnessy. I play Tails. Uh, and Zoe. And, um... Charlie's wife. <laughs> um, Beth is true, I betcha. <laughs> oh, I mean, forget what I just said. Here's Cindy. Hi, I'm Cindy Robinson. And I play Amy Rose. And also Lady Goat. Uh, who else am I? Oh, uh, Justin Bieber, too. Yeah. Oh, secrets out. He's a girl. <laughs> oh right. Oh right. Uh, uh, um, and Dave's mom. Hi, I'm Mike Pollock. I'm uh, fastidious behavior in the program. Uh, also, the mayor. And something else that I do. Oh, Dr. Eggman. That was it. Thank you. All right, that is so awesome. We got a great lineup for you today. So I'm going to turn the mic over to our guy, Jason Berry, once again. And he's going to ask um, our guys some general questions that y'all may want to know. And then afterwards, we're going to ask you guys any questions you may have for them. So here's Jason Berry. All right, thank you, Shane. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Uh, I think, Mike, you're coming all the way from New York. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much, everyone, for coming there. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, first off, what got you into voice acting? Uh, that would be directed, uh, I guess, to these three over here. Um, uh, I mean, uh, 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 <laughs> I mean, Bill is an executive producer. I guess it came from there, I, I imagine. Okay, so starting with Mike, I guess I'll get over here now. I'll start. Uh, as a kid, I grew up listening to the radio and loving theater and figured that once I had a career in radio and radio decided it had enough of me, that I was able to combine my love of both theater and radio and make a demo of the character voices that I had put together in radio, shopped it around, and realized that, oh, people would like me for just the voice acting part. So I went with that. Um, I started out in musical theater, and I did uh, three shows on Broadway in New York. I moved up there when I was 19, and I ended up getting pretty injured in one of them. I did uh, Wendy and Peter Pan for three years, and the harness really messed up my back. And so it's like, well, you look like this, and you sound like that. What are you going to do? Cartoons. So um, that's when I came out to Los Angeles about 15 years ago and, um, and ended up getting into uh, anime to start with and, and going on from there. I, too, started in musical theater. I was not on Broadway, however. <laughs> not even once. Uh, I've been there. I've seen some shows. But um, no, I, was at the, I went to the University of Michigan for musical theater, and voices just always kind of came out of me. I had a dance instructor come running across the room. Hey, was that you? And I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. They just come out. She goes, no, you need to do voiceover. And I went, <gasps> Oh my God, that's somebody's job, and that is for me. So I loaded up the truck and moved to Beverly, but not really Beverly, <laughs> kind of Westwood. Um, and here I am, and that's what, you know, and the rest is history, as they say. I always wanted to do voiceover and be, be a performer, and I wasn't very good at it, but fortunately I became the executive producer of the show, and I was able to force myself upon the rest of the <laughs> cast. Okay, um, what was the next one? Uh, what other roles besides like Eggman, Tails, and Amy, or from other media might people have known you from? Surprisingly, a lot of people know me as being the narrator of Pokemon, but I'm really the interim narrator because I narrated 
but after the original guy left and then he came back. So a couple of years that was me. Um, other bit parts in Pokemon, Saturday morning shows on the Fox Box and 4Kids TV, I was Meat from Ultimate Muscle! <laughs> yeah, the shades are there. <laughs> and then of course there's also Bonaparte from uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, which is the feminine versions of both of them. Um, I was the mayor in Kirby. Uh, I was, uh, really? Okay, thank you. Uh, let's see about this one. I was Big O'Riki in Gogo Riki. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> um, and all sorts of anime stuff. I was uh, Lord of Dawn in Berserk. People like Berserk, apparently. Okay, thanks. And other stuff that I don't recall right now. I am always so bad at this question because I can never recall what I've done. Um, but let's see, I do, uh, I'm the official voice of Betty Boo. If you guys know who Betty Boo Oh! Boop, boop, ba -doo. I want to be loved by you. Um, so if you go to Vegas, there's a whole like series of slot machines, and that's me on those. Um, in, uh, in anime, I do uh, Queen Beryl and Sailor Moon. The Dark Crystal. There we are. Um, and then I do a lot of work in video games as well. So like Astrid and Skyrim, if you guys play that. Uh, Elder Scrolls, I do some work in Mass Effect 2, uh, things like that. So um, the other stuff that I do is some looping. So I'm the voice of the Purge. The Purge will begin in 15 minutes. If you guys go and do that. And I do a lot of work on Gotham. I do a lot of screaming and, and monster work on Gotham. I was on a little show called Danny Phantom. <laughs> Danny, there's no such thing as ghosts. Um, I was Sora on Digimon. Oh, yeah. What? Um, I play Eno and Konohamaru on uh, Naruto. Um, let me think. Um, 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 er. Huh? Kotetsu. Don't I, don't I work with you as Kotetsu? I think you do. Yeah. <laughs> um, I was Nell on Bleach. Um, lots of video game stuff. I was Cosmos and Gina Sage and, oh, I was Wasp on the Avengers. Woohoo. <laughs> Um, yeah, and again, I, I forget to, I make my kid look me up. I'm like, what, what know, was that thing that I did on that other, what the, uh, we have, you know, it's, 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 it's the memory banks get that full. Everything has to come out on IMDb, so it takes like a year and a half before anything ever comes out. So, and they won't let us tell, uh, they won't tell us sometimes what the project is even called. Yeah. Like, we get code names, we go into, uh, to, to work. And it's like, what game is this? And they're like, well, you'll find out. So in a year and a half, you check your own IMDb to find out what game you've been on because they don't tell you anything. Yeah. And then you forget. And then so. you forget. <laughs> right. What other illustrious voices have you done? Uh, this, this is a pretty short list, <laughs> but I, <w> <laughs> I was the voice of Elvis on Pee Wee's Playhouse. Yay! And I was um, the female rhinoceros <laughs> on uh, Drawn Together. Right. And the... Uh, the sex, the the um, sex education film character on Drawn Together, and I was the comic book store owner on Warren the Ape on MTV. All right, awesome. Okay, now what is what's your favorite aspect about the Sonic Boom characters you're playing? <laughs> the um, the wide range of Lady Walrus I always find exciting. <laughs> um, Occasionally, something happens to other than losing her baby. Um, <laughs> and Comedy Chimp is based on a guy I used to know, so he's very near and dear to my heart. I love all the really hard, complicated sentences that <laughs> they give me. <laughs> I just got a thumbs up from <laughs> the other writers. <laughs> so thank you for that, for tongue-twistering me. Um, I love Tails. I just love him so much. And I love the writing. I, s I mean, we r I read the scripts before we even get in the booth. And, oh, my God, I laugh out loud sitting there reading it on my iPad. I mean, the, j the, just the writing is so amazing, and it's just so much fun. And then we go in the booth, and all these people make me laugh my head off. And, you know, we're just sitting there peeing our pants. It's so fun and so much fun, funny, funny funness. Yeah, I wish you guys could hear the outtakes. They're awesome. Maybe someday they'll release them as a bonus feature. Um, I know. <laughs> the writers are like, no. No. Uh, I like the fact that they let Amy be bipolar. <laughs> she is so sweet and wonderful until she's not. And 
<laughs> and uh, it's really rare that they let a girl actually kind of show that side. So that's that's my favorite part of Amy. Dr. Eggman is very cathartic. <laughs> if I have any rage targeted towards customer service representatives <laughs> going in and yelling, attack! <laughs> really kind of clears that right up. Thank you very much. Um, this one is for Cindy. <laughs> I noticed um, that when you first came on board, you were taking over from Lisa Ortiz, and it seemed like the direction they took Amy as far as her voice was uh, fairly different back then. It, and But as you get to Sonic Boom, I noticed her voice is almost completely different, um, uh, more dynamic and um, emotional. Is it something where it's the directors direct you, your character differently dip from the video games to from the cartoon? Yeah, I mean, I think that um, Sonic Boom was, is a complete reinvention. And, um, and so they really allowed me to uh, look at different aspects of her. They wanted her to be strong. If you'll notice, um, now the writing isn't about her being obsessed with Sonic, but about her being his equal and being, being a team member. And I thought that that was really a positive thing. And, and we worked on the voice. We worked on all the voices, really, um, and kind of honed everybody back in. Yeah, we had a table read, I know, for this, which you know most people don't get that kind of a luxury. And so um, we all just kind of went, what works as a unit when we started creating these voices together? And I think everybody was a little bit tweaked. You, you might have been the same. Um, yeah, it's what he does, <laughs> right? <laughs> but uh, but no, they um, they really allowed us to to just have freedom with it and uh, and to find the voice for the new characterization. There's actually a similar question for Mike and uh, Colleen here. Um, do you feel the show gives you more freedom for expression in your roles as Doctor Eggman and Tails? The wonderful thing about Boom is the behind the scenes world of Doctor Eggman that you wouldn't see otherwise doing stuff, hanging out in the lair with the famous pink pajamas. <laughs> yeah. Footy pajamas. Yeah, the footy pajamas. <laughs> and, and, and getting frustrated with government bureaucracy. Just He becomes less a villain and more a crotchety old man. <laughs> and it's just a very fun dynamic to play. Because I'm <laughs> gradually becoming a crotchety old man myself. <laughs> uh, well, kind of being the new kid on the block as far as the Sonic world goes, um, for me, the the freedom comes in with the show as opposed to the video games. There's there's much more of a script, you know, and you're in there playing with all the other actors and all the other characters. And when you're doing the game, you're by yourself, and it's mostly like one-liners and efforts and jumping and running and all that kind of stuff. So it's so wonderful to have a script and have, you know, lines to say and a, an arc, a story arc. <laughs> I learned that. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah, so... Haha, <laughs> 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 um, yeah. So uh, there's more freedom in having, you know, an, a full through through line story. And the other thing with the game is you don't necessarily know what everybody else is doing in the game. Like I know what Tails did, and I know where he goes, but I couldn't. I mean, until I play the game, I don't know anything else that's going on. So when you have a full script and you get to record with a whole group of people, it's fantastic. So much fun. I did have a question for Bill, but you actually answered it earlier on your voice acting roles. Uh, final question before I open it to Q&A. Uh, Mike, what do you consider your favorite role outside of Dr. Eggman? I like the voices that make me laugh. So, meat from Ultimate Muscle, you, how, how can you not laugh at this voice? And the, the casting of that, he meets a little, little guy in a diaper and they weren't sure what they wanted. I don't know, because in, in, in Japanese, it's a girl and it's very much up here. Ella the maid, ladies and gentlemen. Second favorite voice. Um, but when they uh, brought him in for me to, to try something, we don't know what we want. Maybe we want a little voice. Maybe we want a truck driver. Truck driver, you say? <laughs> Excuse me. Hey, how you doing? Yeah, okay, that's good. And then, of course, Ella the maid, a very close second, because the fact that they cast me as Ella the maid makes me laugh. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Okay, uh, who's ready for Q&A? Uh, I have a question for 
Oh, I have a question for Mike Pollock. Hmm. Uh, can oh, how would you be able to imitate Dean Bristow's Dr. Eggman? Like, for example, the line right before fighting the Egg Walker. Like, would you be able to make it as menacing as Dean Bristow did? We don't work with microphones much in our business. <laughs> um, when I was originally auditioning for Dr. Eggman for Sonic X, they gave me clips of Dean Bristow to match. And I went in they and did my best Dean Bristow. So, so the initial audition was very much this. I'm Dean Bristow. Rah, 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 rah. And if you listen to the first couple of episodes of Sonic X, it's very much down here and mean and angry and painful, to be honest. But when we started introducing more of the comedy into the scripts, the producer and director decided we need a little more range, a little more highs and lows. And the reference they gave me, a little tidbit for you, Martin Short's Jiminy Glick character, who starts up way up high and then goes way down low. <laughs> so, especially in the early Sonic X, the, the early to middle Sonic X episodes, there's a lot of highs and lows in his range. So, there was some Dean Bristow, but that was the extent of it. very much. If anyone could, could we form a line right here so that way you don't have to walk over here, go over there, walk over there. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. Okay, you have a question? All right, so why did they make Knuckles how he is in the show? <laughs> uh, FYI, I love Knuckles uh, the way he is in the show. By how they made him in the show, you mean great and funny and enjoyable? <laughs> because, because I find that very amusing, and pretty much <laughs> what I like is what gets into the show. <laughs> yes? Okay. Uh, which episode is your favorite to voice act in? You know, because, you know, for example, Mike Pollock, like every episode you star in is like my favorite episode of how you act. Like, your voice is amazing here. So, which one is like your favorite episode to voice act in? I have a tie, I think. I, my, uh, th the crush, of course, where I have a crush on myself. <laughs> I had a and I had a whole scene with myself, which was awesome. That's based on my life, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Crushing on yourself. Yes. And also the boy band episode, because <laughs> oh my god, friggin' awesome, and we got to sing, and because we sing at every episode, but you guys don't actually get to hear it, because. <laughs> Um, Justin Bieber was up there for me. I loved Justin Bieber because, again, we got to sing. Um, and the other one I liked was My Fair Stixie um, with uh, Nika getting to play opposite of her uh, with the whole uh, My Fair Lady riff on that. So I loved that one too. Huh? Oh, I did. <laughs> we wanted, we did. We wanted a musical. We wanted, yeah, because we, again, we, Colleen and I break into song all the time. Sometimes choreography. Yeah. Yeah, and it's it's interesting that we all know, we know all of the same songs and all the same choreography. And Michael tied in from New York. He's recording in New York, and we're in L.A., so it's kind of like. Yeah. Yeah. I wasn't in the Justin Bieber episode. <laughs> but it was still very good. It was very good. <laughs> um, your favorite, right, Ryan? Yes. Well, my favorite's actually going to be Sam Freiberger's Eggman the Auteur because it's in all sorts of festivals, and uh, it's fun to watch. I wish I was in it! <laughs> oh, so you're in good company because um, Kramer is not in the Chinese restaurant episode because Larry David thought he shouldn't be out of the building because it was a very early episode. So sometimes being left out of the most popular episode may be a, a good thing. <laughs> Uh, yeah, any two, uh, two questions for each of you. Uh, for you, what's, um, uh, for the, for the new 20th, any news on, or details on the 25th so anniversary Sonic game, and, and you, Bill Freiberger, who is the winner of, uh, for Chili Dog Day? Um, 
Um, I don't think we ever name a winner. I think it's um, at that point um, the the chili pepper um, is taking a bath in the chili, in the in the hot tub, and that's the b best chili. But it, it's because he's in it, not because anyone made it. So that was the and it was all a dream anyway. From Knuckles woke up and it was all a dream. Uh, I'd like to announce the 25th anniversary game. Hey, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> Sorry, there's some technical problems. I can't. Sorry. The name is. <laughs> Uh, question for Mike Pollock. Would you want a Mario and Sonic adventure game? And if there was one with Dr. Eggman, would you play it even though Dr. Eggman is the bad guy? And he... Oh, my God. I, I think that's going to be my question. Would you want a Mario and Sonic adventure game? Far be it for me to turn down an opportunity to work. <laughs> <laughs> so sure, if they whatever they love to put Dr. Eggman in, I'd love to be part of. And I've learned from experience that me playing games never ends well for anyone. <laughs> so I'd watch someone else play it for a short amount of time, and it doesn't. It's not. Uh, hey, next question. Hi. Uh, my question is for uh, all of you. Uh, what are some of your favorite lines as your characters, even though it's outside of Sonic Boom or just in the regular series? I can't think of a, of the the lines that uh, really my baby <laughs> my baby <laughs> ha oh I got I gotta fire my agent catch you on the flip flop <laughs> uh, Amy Amy peaked in her very first episode I'm at a crazy pizza man who juggles the things. <laughs> And you feed me ham, evil ham. I got a couple questions. First of all, where do you guys come up with the jokes to these episodes? Because the jokes are my favorite part. And our question, and our question I had was, have you guys done your vo use your voice acting work to play pranks on people? You know, say you'd order pizza and talk in e Eggman's voice. The one story that I like to tell, so I'll tell it now. Uh, the family and I were at a fun fair type of thing, and it was fairly early in the run of Sonic, but people had known me from Sonic X by then and the other games. And uh, we were standing enjoying some refreshing iced beverages, and I guess one of the big midway prizes that year was a giant life-size Sonic figure that somebody had won. And I see a kid wandering down the aisle of the fair with a Sonic strapped to his back. <laughs> and I thought, hmm, should I? <laughs> yes, I will. Look, it's Sonic! Don't look at me, I'm just some guy drinking. Don't hide, don't hide. I don't know what that was, I don't know. That was it. No, I have not. <laughs> I know, right? Now I'm boring. But I do want to give a shout out, by the way, all the funny stuff happens because of our writing team, which is back here. Sam, Greg, Alan, and under the tutelage of Bill, um, Honestly, we have one of the best teams in the business. They are crackerjack writers. Uh, I worked at, uh, I was, you know, a, a struggling actor, and I, I had three different jobs, and one of my jobs was doing graphics for, I'm like, what's this thing with the keyboard? That's a computer. Hmm. <laughs> um, and it was for a tape duplication, uh, you know, thing where, these, okay, kids, a tape, a cassette tape is a little plastic <laughs> thing. It's about this big, and you put it in a, in a player, and you have to push, push down a button for the music to come out. So, <laughs> so I worked at a tape duplication business, and my, my boss uh, was making me make these cold calls, which I'm like, cold calls, what, what? So I'm like, hi, I'm Adele, A-D-E-L. 
I was wondering, and so, because he was trying to figure out, like, other pricing of other, like, tape duplication. <laughs> I wanted to do my demo, and I thought maybe you could help me out. What is your prices and stuff? And, and so I just would do different, that was the only, you know. <laughs> hey, mister. Anyway, that's how I used my my voice work for evil. Um, if you want to know where the jokes come from, I stare at a blank screen for a long time and feel real bad about myself. <laughs> and then I start drinking. <laughs> and sometimes when I wake up, there's a joke on the screen. <laughs> sometimes there's something else on my keyboard. It, it's all relative. What's actually your favorite video game series and why? Sonic the Hedgehog, obviously, because I'm in it. Was there more? Oh. Uh, what else? When I was a kid, I played Trivia Wiz in the arcade. And the reason I played Trivia Wiz in the arcade is because there were so few questions that I eventually memorized them and rose to the top of the leaderboard by memorizing all the answers. <laughs> Not proud of it. Centipede? Uh, okay, yay! You've heard of it. Fro Frogger? <laughs> I, I got a real weird one. I'm, I'm really into classic gaming, and I have a lot of old systems. But my favorite game is this ridiculous game called Hatchress on the NES. <laughs> it's this ridiculous Tetris clone where you stack hats. Look it up. Uh, uh, Google it. It's, it's a stupid game. Reminds me, you and me were talking about Atari 2600 games on Twitter. Now I got Nolan Bushnell <laughs> following me on it. <laughs> Before I ask my question, are you ab are you allowed to do improv? Uh, right now, <laughs> like just. <laughs> um. Well, for for Amy and Tails, uh, could you improv? <laughs> Can you improv uh, Amy asking advice on Sonic to Tails from Tails? Tails, I'm worried. What are you worried about, Amy? I don't think Sonic likes me. You know, like, likes me? Well, of course he likes you. We're all on the same team. What are you talking about? I don't mean that, Tails. What do you mean? I mean, does he, you know, think I'm cute or anything? Uh, why are you being weird? I'm not being weird! <laughs> I, mean, I mean, yes, I don't know, yes, Knuckles! <laughs> Tails, this is serious business, all right? I need to know if Sonic likes me! Okay, look, uh, you're making me really nervous and I gotta go back to my robots and my plane. I, I gotta go! You're no help. Looks like they don't need the writers after all. <laughs> um, I actually have a question for Colleen. Um, if Digimon Try gets localized, would you be willing to revive your role as Sora? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I would be willing. You know, sure, of course, would love to. Neither I was a huge Sonic fan nor an uh, anime fan. So, uh, to to all of you, what game does they have? What game? What Sonic game do you did they have? Like, uh, did they made it back in Japan or the Americas? Kind of yes. <laughs> the the game development has kind of shifted. Um, the classic games um, up through say Colors and Generations all started in Japan, and then when the big recasting of 2010 happened, 
that's when development kind of shifted to the U.S. So we started in English first with Colors and Generations and the current games. And then they get localized in the other direction back to Japanese. I guess. Sure. Somebody tell Wikipedia that that's now the correct. So I have a question for the voice actors. Uh, I myself am trying to up and coming. When you're in the booth, when you're doing not just Sonic, when you're doing all your lines, all your games, what is your most favorite moment in the booth? When they tell me I did it right and I can move on to the next line. <laughs> Yeah, what Mike said. Um, you mean in the booth specifically, like for recording session? Oh, um, I, I yes, we, <laughs> <laughs> we do. It's like yay. Uh, <laughs> I don't know that there's one specific moment other than, uh, um, or or if they say, hey, we really like that. Um, let's give you another character. That's a good one too. My favorite thing is all the amazing people I get to work with, honestly. I get to work with the most talented, ridiculously awesome people on on Sonic, but also on other things too. And uh, you know, the things that these people can do m creating characters and stuff is just I feel so so lucky. For me on the other side of the glass, the record is my favorite part of the entire process of the show. I love working with the actors. They take everything that we write and move it from like a five to a 20. It's just everything becomes so much funnier and comes to life when, when these guys do it. And stuff that I imagined was funny is funny. Stuff that I wasn't sure was funny comes out funny. They really just plus the thing so much. It's the best part of the entire process for me. <laughs> One answer per person. No, no, <laughs> my, my previous answer didn't count. I love getting a laugh from the folks in the booth. Because that really means I've done something right. Or, or the rest of the gang is like, oh, good, that did work. Thank you. <laughs> Are you planning on like making any more characters in Sonic a boom? Like Cream or Blaze or anything like that? Any other characters? <laughs> I think that's more of a question for the creative side. but Season 2 has not officially been announced yet, so I can't answer any specifics about if there will be anything in season two. Um, there are issues with taking the characters from other Sonic properties and bringing them into Boom, but I suspect that we'll see at least some uh, modern Sonic character in, s in season two in s of Sonic Boom, should that happen. Should that happen, there might be a another character or two from uh, classic Sonic. <laughs> yes. Um, who brought you to like make Sonic Boom? I actually came on to Sonic Boom later than you guys. I was brought on by the executive producer Evan Bailey, who found me in an alley, passed out. <laughs> and said, it's time we resurrect your career. <laughs> Come with us to Sonic Boom. And so Evan Bailey hired me, and I've been working with all the people at uh, Sega and uh, Lemonade Productions ever since. And it's been a lot of fun, and we've got to do a lot of fun stuff with Sonic Boom. As a voice actor, we have to do auditions for every job that we get. It's like having a job interview like five or six times a day. <laughs> So they'll send us a script, and we'll record it and send it out, and hopefully they liked it. And so that's how I got the job. Actually, there was a callback first, too. So you'll do your audition, and then they want you to come back and try it again. And then so hopefully they say, yes, we want you for that part. This is a really awkward question, but who do you ship in Sonic Boom? <laughs> I love Lady Walrus. <laughs> <laughs> Knuckles. Right? Right? Oh, wait, I have to ship two people? I thought I was shipping with them. Sorry. Oh, oh. <laughs> 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 I don't know how this works. 
Look, we're old people. We don't ship. I've been shipped for 16 years. Um. <laughs> You know, Tails and Zoe. There you go. Oh. Ha -ha, look at I did it. Right. I mean, well, this really <laughs> mine is easy, I guess, right? What do you guys think? Should should Sonic and Amy ship? Ship? <laughs> give me a, uh, give me my yeses. Yes. Give me my noes. No. Well, what do you think? Really? Oh, that's harsh. Fastidious Beaver and Lady Walrus would be fun. <laughs> Come on, Lady Goat is hot. Or Lady Goat. Back right. to me, your baby. <laughs> what? That's oh, right. Uh, I'm nervous. Um. <laughs> <laughs> um, what's like the first of? Uh, voice acting that you guys started off with and was it like nerve wracking at first or did you guys have like any um, like rough takes and stuff like that? Actually the first voice I ever, vo voice over work I ever did was a commo commercial for a local Long Island comedy club <laughs> <laughs> called Chuckles. <laughs> <laughs> Just like you w w what else did you expect a comedy club to be named? It was Chuckles of Mineola. <laughs> <laughs> My very first voiceover job was a reporter Barbie book. I played Skipper, and you push the button. It's fun to be a reporter. That was my very first job. and But my very first show was the Kids from Room 402. And I played Polly McShane. She collected spoons. She liked to do the polka. She was really loud, and I got to play next to Edie McClurg, who is awesome. But then she requested to record alone, because I was so loud. <laughs> 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 so that was a little awkward. But and then my very first anime was Sora and Digimon, and that was very nerve-wracking. Thank you. I, Because I didn't know what I was doing. When you do anime, you have to do it to the picture, and they play beeps, and I'm like, what's with happening? I did not know at all what I was doing, so it was total on-the-job training, and I had to pretend like, of course I know what I'm <laughs> doing. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just do it again. Here we go. I, You know, it was really, really, I was like a wreck at the end of those sessions, and they were only barely two hours, and it was really, really hard to get that rhythm. You have to hear these three beeps, and then you got to speak, and then you got to make the words fit with the mouth and the... So uh, that was really stressful for me. Right. <laughs> My very first uh, voiceover gig was um, a role called um, Makoto Nanaya in a show called GTO. I don't know if you guys remember GTO. Um, anyway, so the only thing that any of the, the staff had seen was the very first episode. And I went in and I auditioned for it. And the director, it happened to be her first time directing. And so it was my first time, her first time, and she said, I'll take a risk on her. We can learn this together. And then it turns out that my character died in the second episode. So what we thought was the lead in the show never came back again. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, then I ended up playing the mother, so which was you know kind of my wheelhouse for a long time. When I started this whole freelancing thing, the very first thing that I was booked for is highly forgettable. And you can find it online overpriced at several hundred dollars. It's really not worth that. But it's called Little Tug's Big Adventure. And it's a cute concept. It's live action footage of boats in New York Harbor. And I was playing the voices of all the male boats. Um, I was going to be the voice of one of the female, of the female boats, too. And then they decided, no, you're really not good at that. <laughs> and it was recorded in some guy's house in his bedroom. Which I guess is, yeah, it was completely legitimate, of <laughs> course, but uh, apparently to save money in the budget. Um, and it was quaint, wasn't great, but if you really want to see it, go ahead and pay too much for it. <laughs> it's the final question. <laughs> Will do. <laughs> Boy, the pressure's on here. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> 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 
Anyways, uh, my question is, every voice actor has their least favorite role. What would y'all's least favorite be? I can't. I don't have enough uh, experience. That they're, they're all good to me. I'm just happy to be able to do it and get out of the writer's room for 10 minutes. I kind of feel like they're all a little part of me. So I, I don't know that I could say that I, there's any one that I don't like because I feel so lucky to get to do this for my job, and I'm so grateful every single time I book something. So I don't think I could say, well, <laughs> well you kind of sucked. I just <laughs> – uh, <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I, I That's a tough question. Well, if you accept the future, I'll tell you what mine is. <laughs> oh, good, good, please. Yeah. please. What's your opinion? Oh. Um, I won't say that I have a, a least favorite because I d I'm the same way. I don't. I can tell you ones that I remember the most because of negative connotations. And one of them uh, was a game where I was I was playing like this kind of a chick. You know, she was really low and, and all of that. And when they, they brought me back for my pickup session, it was 500 lines at three different levels of volume. 500 lines. That's not a pickup session, you guys. That is like sometimes two sessions. And they called it a pickup session. So I was literally leaving pieces of my vocal cord on the, on the stand in front of me. And that one was probably one of my least favorite sessions. But character-wise, I, I don't know that that really exists. I know what the internet thinks is my least favorite <laughs> role, so I'll tell you. <laughs> Go on to YouTube, look up rat tat toying. Oh, no. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, there's a company in Brazil who specializes in making knockoffs of popular films, and this is a knockoff of a popular film involving a mouse that sh cooks. <laughs> and um, the company that dubs it is also known for its mediocre level of quality, but he also gives you a check when you leave the room, and that's a great reason to work for him. <laughs> and he called me in to say, I've got two hours of work for you. Okay, I'm not doing anything. And it turned out to be rat tat -toying. And I, don't, I got paid for it. I don't have a problem <laughs> with it. Sorry you don't enjoy it. But oh free no. feel free to watch it. There's, there's a lovely annotated version that someone makes all the snarky comments that are already in your head, so you don't have to. You should see it. Everyone should see it. All right, I got to ask this. So what do y'all think? What do, what do you guys think of our, our for co convention right now? All right, I think that's all we. I think that's all we got now. And then in uh, fifteen, maybe a little less than fifteen minutes, we're going to have the uh, Sonic Boom behind the scenes with our production guys. Woo! All right, thank you very much, guys. for the part of sidekick. Amy, I know who you are. Great, because I am fine with nepotism. Oh, and under special skills, you can add juggling and singing. Next! All qualified candidates welcome. Best candidate gets the job. I'm a lock! Unless there's something you're not telling me. My name is Dr. Eggman, and I'm here about the sidekick position. I could be a valuable asset to your organization. Uh, for example, I'm a doctor. Not a real doctor, a PhD, but still... 